What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Hey, do you nerd for the answers? All the answers? Because we have them. That would be 42. All right, and there you go. The answer to life, the universe, and everything in it. We are done here. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys. Bye. Bye. Huge shout out to all of you who took place in our 3,000 sub celebration. Thank you so much. First and foremost, we cannot thank you guys enough for genuinely supporting us for so long. So many of you have been with us from the start, and I can't believe you stuck with us this long. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much. And we really appreciate the fantastic questions we had. We had a lot of fun. A lot of them we had to think about, which is why we had to print them off and make some notes on the answers so that we could go through them. I'm just going to pretend I'm a news reporter. Of course, obviously, as of this video, you know, no more questions there. But if any more questions do appear on that video, I may try to still be nice and answer them in the comments. So in no particular order, let's just start going through them. Once again, thank you so much for supporting us. Thanks for your questions. And hopefully you like the answers. Waves and Games, have you ever heard of this guy? No, who's that? Oh my gosh, that was exciting. Anyway, Waves and Games, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? My answer surprised you, didn't it? It did, yes. It's coffee ice cream. See, that doesn't surprise me at all because mine's totally coffee. Love coffee ice cream. But you thought I was going to say strawberry. I did. That is my favorite ice cream flavor until you and I got together and you introduced me to coffee flavored <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> so I love coffee ice cream. So we're on the same page with that. I also just love mix-ins. Uh, oh, so, yeah. you know, like getting some, some caramel, some chocolate in there, like some chocolate flakes or anything. Basically, I will eat any kind of ice cream if it's got some good mix-ins in it. Otherwise, if it's just ice cream, coffee. And he had a follow-up. When can we go get ice cream? You ready? No, I was hoping you'd be at the door. All right, well, <laughs> moving on. So uh, James Provo 8053 says, congrats in favorite console. For me, uh, I often lean towards the Super Nintendo. A lot of that is nostalgia. I love 16-bit games. Pretty much all of them seem to hold up very well as far as like visuals audio, gameplay, they're still a lot of fun. So many great RPGs back in the day. However, nostalgia glasses aside, I don't know, I probably put more time into playing the PS2, such a huge library, and it took everything that was really great about gaming in the era of like PS1, it just amped it up so many notches. Things looked good, a lot of the games still hold up really well today, and the birth of so many great franchises started there. So. Super Nintendo for nostalgia, PS2 for actual gaming. <laughs> Mine's easy. Mine's the Switch. Oh, you love the I Switch. I love the Switch. To me, that is the best invention Nintendo ever came out with because it is so versatile. I, I've said it in many, many videos before. I love the fact that I can play it in the handheld. When I want to, I can put it on the TV, play it up there, literally switch it back and forth as quickly as I want to. It's just, it's so great. Let's do some simple math. How many of us are there? Two. How many Switches do you have? Well, we have Day One Switch. We have Animal Crossing Switch, Zelda OLED Switch, Splatoon OLED Switch, and a Switch Lite. I need all those. Help. It's my favorite console. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Next, uh, J Chip Show left a, a great long comment with congrats. Thank you so much. J Chip has been with us for uh, quite the haul too. <laughs> now he had a specific question for you. For Lady me. Lacey, I'm curious to know your origins as a comic book fan. Well, that one stems back to the 1990s X-Men cartoon. Absolutely love that cartoon. Never missed it on a Saturday morning. Got that is literally my introduction to the X-Men. I didn't know anything about X-Men other than from that cartoon. Comic book tables, house Legos, and action figs, retro gaming, amiibos, and image prints, watch as they collect them all. But then, later on, there was a comic book shop that opened up in town called Comic Cave, and there was a guy there named Josh, the owner. He was very, very great at talking to you. He didn't balk at any um, comic you were in love with. He didn't care if you liked reading, like, this comic versus that comic. He didn't care. He just answered any question. He was super knowledgeable, super encouraging. And that's kind of what stemmed my love of comics was because I just started talking to him. And there, actually, it was 
a Gwenpool action figure that I liked there, knew nothing about her, asked him about it, told me about it, showed me the comics, I started reading them, and then it was just, that was it. Josh loved that you loved comics, yes. plain and simple. He loved when little kids came in and liked reading comics. That was like his favorite. He'd always light up when they would come in and everything. Unfortunately, the store had to close, so I don't get that wonderful comic book shop anymore. But we do see him still at conventions. Yeah, yeah, stuff, we get so. to chat him up. So that's fine. Uh, a great question for me. This, this took some thinking too. Some of my favorite games that I've got through VGM, so very specifically through VGM. Uh, well, first of all, I love that they sent you a box copy of Zombies Ain't My Neighbors yes. on Sega Genesis because one of your all-time favorite games, yes. they totally hook you up yes. with that. Once they found out that you were looking for that, yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't send me anything that nice. They never send you anything you ask for, <laughs> but when I ask for things, they send it. <laughs> but uh, no, they've, they've really sent some great things over the years. Something that I have enjoyed getting from them actually have been the Famicom and Super Famicom cards for uh, like Final Fantasy, Dragon mm -hmm. Quest, all those RPGs because I can't play them in the fact that I don't know Japanese, but I always wanted to collect them just to have because the label art's great. I love the series, the franchises and everything. And this is the perfect way for me to add them to my collection without going out and paying an arm and a leg for a game that ultimately is going to be shelf candy. One other thing though, they are great about uh, working with you. If there's ever anything that you're looking for, you know, contact them. They'll see if they have it in store and try to make a deal with you. And I was actually able to pick up some ROM carts from them. So that was fun. Yeah, yeah things like uh, some some translated Dragon Quest mm -hmm. ports, um, some Zelda games. So they're like the the ROM hacks and everything, yeah. stuff like that. We got a great Mario. 007 game crossover. Yeah. So I was able to get some of those from them, which was really great. And yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> they, they've hooked me up. Not as nicely as you, but uh, that's all right. And then... You gotta bat your eyelashes more. <laughs> <laughs> final question. This is for both of us. Has this six-year journey increased your love of everything nerdy? And do you think your passion may not be as strong as it is if you guys did not do YouTube? For me, I think it makes me pay more attention to the things I'm nerdy about because I'm constantly thinking, ooh, should we film this? Should we do a video about this? So I pay more attention when I'm out and about because I'm thinking, ooh, could we make a video like that? So maybe, maybe it makes me more <laughs> into my passion about it. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I think that it's, uh, it's increased mine because of the community, being able to share like with in comments through videos at conventions to talk to people like-minded nerdlings who yeah. love all the stuff that we love because like my job i don't have any co-workers i i have one <laughs> and they are one billion percent not interested in anything that i'm interested in so i don't have people at work to talk to but i have this community that i can talk yes. to um and also just again for the community they've opened our eyes on stuff to collect you know yeah, toys that we didn't, didn't know about, about yeah games we didn't know about that we had to check out then um, and then, of course, like just uh, the events, the, the chance to go and, and be nerdy and to share with the community, you know, our love for these events and to show it's cool to be nerdy. It's, it's fun. You know, yeah. there's so many people out there that love all this stuff that you do. So I think that's what the YouTube channel has done to, like, increase my love of everything yeah, nerdy. Yeah, I would agree with that. So, Patrick, show me retro. Rarest item in your collection. Now, this is always kind of tricky because I really don't follow the value of anything in yeah. here. Like, if you ever ask me, what's your most expensive game? Zero idea. I, I just, I don't, I don't care enough to follow the values. And it's also tough because, guys, man, those values change all the time. That game that was, like, pretty easy to find and cheap, forget about it now. Uh, <laughs> however, I did start to think about some things... And the, the ones that came to mind was, we have this little Pac-Man mirror. Now this is like a, a glittery, velvety mirror piece. This is the type of thing that you would have gotten from an old carnival. We actually mm -hmm. found it at the flea market. And it's one of those unique items. I mean, how many of these were ever made? We've how never many, seen one before. How many still exist? Where else would you have gotten it? It feels like a fair yes. carnival yeah. prize. And I, I can't imagine that all of them are still intact out there. So there's that. We uh, we actually have this Pac World Pachinko machine, another yeah. flea market find. And though I imagine that Namco probably put a lot of these out. I mean, how many do people actually have? It's kind of like when it you have a It is Japanese kiosk. though, so it's kind of one of those things. There might be a lot more over maybe in Japan, but not here stateside. True. And the last thing that came to my mind, in all honesty, 
I've got these two amazing Zelda paintings. I've got one that's Link to the Past themed, courtesy of Russ Lyman, and I've got this Toon Link, Wind Waker-esque, sorry Cap, uh, <laughs> Zelda painting from Retro Rivals. And let's face it, you don't get much more rare than yeah. one of a kind pieces like that. Yeah, it was it's is good. Is it really good? Yep. <laughs> oh, 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 that is awesome. That. Oh my gosh. There's that. I would say that's probably the rarest yeah. item in the collection. I would say for me, I'm also the same thing. I don't pay attention to values of things. I honestly also don't know how rare this is. I just know that when I was trying to find it, to rebuy it, because I had it as a kid but then wanted it as an adult, I could never find it anywhere online or out and about. But it would be my Silverhawks um, jet that I've got that mm -hmm. you found for me finally. Um, like I said, with a little I, community hill. Yeah. But it's like, I never, we went to so many conventions, toy conventions, flea markets all over and couldn't find it. I eBayed it, never found it on eBay. So it's like, to me, that kind, that to me seems rare. I don't know how rare it actually is. So I would say that. And like you said, I have a few um, one of a kind paintings, smaller paintings that I've gotten at conventions, like my Niffler and uh, little badger drawing that I have and my and my uh, spider Gwen and my silk paintings that I that you got for me so you know I think those would probably be my rarest leprechaun 33 Tom what was the first thing you bought and showed on YouTube for the first time and Lacey got the exact same question now fortunately this was actually easy to to check out because while I don't remember I was able to go back to those videos please don't watch them they are still on the channel but don't don't watch or if you do Remember, it was in the early days. Don't there's, judge. There's no mics, no lights, no nothing. Uh, so, you know, one of my first pickups actually that I was showing off on the channel were just a variety of, of games. So there was, uh, I mean, there was stuff like some PS3 titles there. There were some VR titles because you were super big in the yes. PS VR yes. for a little bit. Um, uh, you had some old school stuff like Banjo-Kazooie, even Popeye, an old Popeye cartridge. <laughs> and I had picked up some 3DO long boxes and I... I am fascinated by these boxes, but oh, they're such a pain to try to put on the shelf because you pretty much have to lay them out. They're so huge. As for you, your first thing that you showed off was a Marvel Collector Core box. Really? Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> this one was a great one because it was like a Guardians of the Galaxy themed one. So you had this uh, fantastic pop figure t-shirt. Of, of the Guardians. Uh, you had a rocket with a baby Groot Funko Pop. And then I think it was a Dorbs, but it was Star-Lord in the Milano. Okay, yeah, I remember So that. It, was, uh, yeah. it was a pretty good box, was, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and then they asked both of us to be a guest at a Renaissance Fair. Well, I mean, if they ask, you know, we can't say no, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm sure they could probably find some better guests than us. We, we just like to wander around and, and eat all the good foods. Looking for a turkey leg. Are they really all gone? I came to this place for a turkey leg, and I hear they all have disappeared. Devin does tech says huge congrats on 3k in six years always interested in the tech people are using for youtube i what, wonder why what Doesn't piece <laughs> of equipment or tech or software has made youtube the easiest for you i don't know that i would say easiest but i would say enhanced i would say the lights and the lapel mics so you can hear us and see us yeah if you even want to hear us when we us. started <laughs> off i mean we, we had a makeshift light uh lamp and we just, you know, tried to project. <laughs> it wasn't great. <laughs> For me, the phone rig that we yes, use that's, at that's conventions. So we film on phones. We're not fancy at all. We try to tell people that all the time. But the rig, one, it gives me the confidence to actually go up and talk to people. Because believe it or not, I'm scared out of my mind yeah. to go and approach people. Uh, and, but two, it also seems a little more professional <laughs> when you have the rig. And people seem to kind of open up a little more when they yeah. see that you're not just some weirdo with a phone in their face. I did want to kind of shout out the software that I use for editing, Filmora. Now, I do use a paid version. We got a lifetime plan for it. But it has been so user-friendly. Again, we're, we're fairly simple about our video production. 
I don't do a whole lot of After Effects or anything, so Filmora pretty much does all the things that I want to do. And the fact that it's so easy to use, I mean, it, it gets me through a lot. I'm totally going to butcher this one, but Arexu Kurosaki274 loves us, offers congrats, and the question is, what is the cheapest, most expensive, and mid-range item you both own? Now, this is a very tricky question. I think you already said you don't have an answer. I do not have an answer for this because I do not pay attention to stuff like that. So we don't really follow the value, so it's always hard for us to try to figure that out anyway. The other thing is, I mean, that's a good question because it's like the expensive one, well, I can look that up and as of this date, like this game or this item could be the most expensive. But as for the mid and low, that's hard to answer because I mean, mid, like where do you draw yeah. the line? But the low, I mean, there's literally stuff that we've gotten for free, we've picked up for free, people have sent us, you know, so uh, any value that it has is more personal, sentimental. But I did have kind of a fun answer because I wanted to say, Futurama on PS2 for all three of those. See, it's the cheapest because it was free. Sega had sent us that game for free. So <laughs> Futurama on PS2 was free. Uh, however, mid, because this is the PAL version. I do not have a PAL PS2 system. I'm not looking to get one, but maybe there's a way that I can find a way around it to actually play it. So it's kind of useless, but you know, there's still that value to it because it was from a friend. Yeah. And because Futurama on PS2 in North America is stupid expensive. There's no reason <laughs> for it to be so expensive. Apparently it's not that expensive in the PAL region. But uh, yeah, there you go. So Futurama, PS2, the PAL version. That's our lowest, mid-range, <laughs> most expensive item all in one. Well, here I got one for you. I thought of something. All right. So the cheapest thing in our collection is you. And why would that be? Because I can't even get you sometimes to buy a 99 cent game. That's true. <laughs> the most expensive thing in the collection would be me. This one. Because I spend money like it's nothing. Because I can't stop her from buying no, stuff. I like things. As far as mid-range goes, I don't know, dog and cat maybe, because they don't really do anything. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Frat Mocha, not only are they delicious, they congrats to us on the six year anniversary. 3K subs, they love our content, and especially when we both go on trips like Medieval Themed Festival. Thus, their question is totally unrelated. <laughs> What's your top three co op video games you enjoyed playing together? I would say for me, number one would definitely be Lego. Lego, yep. Definitely 100%. Same Lego. here. We have played nearly all of the Lego games together, yes. and Whenever we encourage people to play video games together, especially with their partners, mm -hmm. Lego's always the first pick. Say the next one for me would be those X-Men games. Oh, like the X-Men Legends and stuff? Yeah, like the Ultimate the, Alliance. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, those are good. The X-Men, the Marvel ones. Yeah, we've played Excellent a lot of those. Pick. I chose Mario Kart. I mean, it's simple, Something, yeah. but it's it's such a perfect game to like pop on for, you know, like one, two rounds. Sometimes if we're waiting on dinner to finish cooking, mm -hmm. do two rounds or something. Or pack in an hour before we go to bed just to have something yeah. to do to kind of keep us awake. I also like playing Luigi's Mansion with you. Oh, Luigi's Mansion. With I Luigi. I play as Gooigi. Yeah, I like to mess with you on that game yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I chose uh, Minecraft actually. That's another good Because one, yeah. even though we, we do play it with a group of friends online, you and I, we work really well together yes. on that. We you build built a house, lot of stuff. I fill it with stuff. Yeah. Uh, like many times realize. I will do like supply runs and everything. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, we, uh, we're a good team on Minecraft. Because an honorable mention would be Smash Brothers? Maybe. 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 <laughs> okay, next is uh, Rock Solid. Uh, never heard of this guy. Me calling you gaming off the grid before Siege wasn't memorable? Well, it was at Mo GameCon, but uh, who are you again? Oh, I gotta, about a, an exacto knife? Oh, gotta, gotta give Gary a hard time. <laughs> uh, Zopster, excellent work, guys. Hope the YouTube algorithm blesses you one day and helps add a few extra zeros at the end. I think that's the problem. YouTube keeps putting them at the beginning. They, they gotta get that fixed. Uh, <laughs> so the question is, which game do you guys like best when playing against each other 1v1? 
he's not going to ask who wins most. <laughs> See, this is where I said Mario Kart or Smash Brothers. I put the exact same ones, except I put Smash or Mario Kart. <laughs> so we, we flip-flopped the order. But yeah, uh, because like we're we're not super competitive no. with gaming anyway. And not with each other or with other yeah, people. Yeah, when it comes to gaming, we usually like to play co-op stuff. The we stuff like to work, work together. together yeah. But Mario Kart and Smash, we will compete against one another. Fun little story for Smash Brothers. We used to use it to decide things. We did. Uh, once upon a time, we got the Super Smash Brothers Peach Amiibo, and we both really wanted to claim her, you know, as ours. Not like we share everything, but uh, we wanted to claim her, so we let Smash decide. I win. She won. Thanks, Smash. Sometimes if we didn't know what to do for dinner, we would do the four fighters, and we would name them a different meal. <laughs> And then whichever one won, that's what we had for dinner. And I might pop in there, you know, if I want to make sure that Chinese food wins. Pork chops won a lot. <laughs> yeah, they really did. <laughs> Big Mosh, congrats us on 3K subs. Only been subscribed for about three months now, but really enjoying everything. Thank you so much for joining us. Really yes, appreciate you. you. Um, <laughs> really awesome and fun seeing two nerds like myself talk about nerdy things. That's what we do. And question, what is your favorite video game of all time? Question is for both of us. Mine would be the Sims franchise. I absolutely love playing any kind of sim simulation game, but The Sims really is a lot of fun. I've played it from the very beginning on the PC up into its most modern iterations and everything. And I've watched it evolve and, you know, watched you be able to, you know, not really do a whole lot with your family up into having like family trees out the, you know, huge and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I would say The Sims. Well, I usually fall back on two games. Link to the Past on Super Nintendo and Chrono Trigger on Super Nintendo. Chrono Trigger to me was like the epitome of what an RPG could be. Not only was it gorgeous and amazing soundtrack, but the story was great. I loved the mix of time travel. In many instances, it was used very, very cleverly throughout the story. Great characters, just a fun game to play. It offered some mechanics that kind of shook up the standard JRPG motif at the time. And Link to the Past, I mean... I had played the first two Zelda games on NES, and they were fine, but Link to the Past is what really pulled me into that world and made me a lifelong fan. It's still so, so gorgeous to look at to this day. Still sounds so amazing and plays like a dream. It's seriously the definition of a timeless classic to me. Retro Gamer Boy. Who's that? He didn't make this easy. <laughs> Amazing work, guys. Well done, and congratulations. Thank you. Means a lot coming from you, sir. What was your favorite video over the last six years? Well, that's, that's easy for me. It was well, hard for you. I mean, we've got like over 700 videos, and we never rewatch our stuff. So once those videos go out, I totally forget all about them. They're, they're out of sight, out of mind. For me? Aww. You that better was, have said that. That was so sweet. I loved that video. And such a surprise. Well, good, good. I, I was pretty proud with how that came together. I, I like that. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I listed a few videos. I couldn't really think of any one in particular, but that was one of mine, the, the 10th wedding anniversary video that I did. The Great Alaskan Game Rush. So that was years ago. That was a five part series. We had uh, some friends that helped put us in touch with someone who hooked us up with a huge boost to our collection, both in games and consoles. An amazing deal. And we wanted to go through it all and share it with you guys. And it literally took five videos. There was so much cool stuff to show. And uh, let me tell you, it could not have gotten to a better home. The Central Missouri Renaissance Festival video from 2018 that was such uh, a great time to go because we went with our friends uh -huh. and it was their first time going to this renaissance yes. festival and it was also the last time we got to do something all together because that was when peter and his family were moving out of state mm -hmm. across the country and so this was really our last chance you know to do a thing together this video is like a great memento of that kind of a memory which is why we you know put these videos out because they yes. are those memories looking into the past and the way that video ended, I caught kind of the closing ceremony and it was just very heartfelt the way people were singing yeah. because it, it felt like they were singing to us, yeah. you know, as a group, yeah. you know, singing us off. We did get a really great group photo at the end. Too, we did. So.
and kind of on that note with that companionship the siege <laughs> day two video just because i loved putting together this little introduction uh, <laughs> that was using the family ties no theme that was song great. Can't love each other. And I mean, it was just so much fun uh, with with J Love, Linda, Eight Bit Glitch, and the two yeah. of us. And I mean, we really made like a little tight knit family. Yeah, it was it was just funny, and I <laughs> I'm proud of how that came together as yeah. as like a, a sitcom <laughs> intro. And the last one I just want to throw out our trip to Mexico because. I'm yep. pretty sure that's like our best doing video. Anytime yeah. someone's like, if you guys want your channel to do better, what's your, your best performing video? Something we can't recreate. Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it, again, kind of tying into that, you know, looking back, that memory, that memento, it's a great way to look back on our trip to Mexico. I just was, want to be back in Mexico. Uh, that's true. That's, that's the best we can do is I can turn that video on and turn a fan on you. Or something. Oh, where's my free drinks? <laughs> Super Nintendo, congrats us on the milestone. Oof, if you could go back in time to when you started collecting, what would you tell your past selves? <laughs> Put your stuff away immediately after you get it. And why is that? Because I have a bad habit of just going into my room and putting it down. And so my collections room is a bit of a mess right now because nothing is put away after I get it. <laughs> to be fair, as of filming this, we're barely ever home. Yeah. So all yeah. I have do time to do is go in there and put it down on a table. <laughs> and the type table is like this. <laughs> I would say to us, take advantage of the Toys R Us sales. Yes. When Toys R Us was open in our area, they had sales all the time. And so many times we were just like, ah, you know, maybe next time, maybe next time. Yeah. Never knowing that they were going to be closing and gone forever. Uh, so I would have loved to have taken advantage of more of those sales. Also, saying yes now to GameStop whenever they would offer us a kiosk. Yes. There were times when we didn't have a proper vehicle while we were at the store. But in retrospect, I think I would have said, yes, let me see if I can find someone with a truck yeah. and we'll be right back. <laughs> because that ship has sailed and that stinks. Yeah. A Wii U kiosk, guys. This close. <laughs> Swing and a miss. <laughs> Cliff Racer, 56K6. Have you played Morrowind? No. No? Uh, <laughs> I missed out on that one. I'm not a big PC gamer. Really never have been. And I believe it got an Xbox port. And that's where I would have played it. But it's in the backlog. It is definitely one of those like wish list games. Or dream games that I want to play. Backlog games. Because, I mean, come on. Elder Scrolls. Plus, I've always heard good things about Morrowind, and I haven't played Oblivion either. I'm I'm a bad Elder Scrolls person. Uh oh. Hmm. I... <laughs> He's gonna use that some way. You know that. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Melissa Keller, thirty-eight, seventeen. Congrats. We love running into you guys at local conventions. Always enjoy seeing <laughs> you guys too. I liked this question. What's your must-haves for road trips? Well, she basically answered my question because she goes snacks, music, handhelds, etc. And it's like, yes, that. But basically, I have to have road snacks because I get like bored. But I like snacks that are like small and bite-sized and not really messy. But it's real easy to like pick one up at a time and to like so I because I drive. I'm the driver, so I want to be able to like pay attention to the road and eat and stuff. But you always have to have a good playlist too. Well, I was gonna say on the snacks, trail mix, trail I mix, like trail mix, and peanuts, sun chips. Yeah, peanuts, sun chips, Oreos. The those cheddar. are my three oh, favorites. Man. Yeah. And then I was gonna say you gotta have good, good music. Good oh, playlist. like like some classic rock. Uh, yep, that's exactly what I said. Classic rock playlist. And uh, we also throw in some dorky YouTube parody songs that we've picked up over the years. Stuff some from geekities. like, uh, <laughs> yeah, geekities from the old Screen Team show, Brental Floss, whatever we found over the years. Mm -hmm. Stuff that uh, basically it ingrains ourselves as the song. So when we hear the real song, it's like those words are wrong. That's not right. right. Uh, they also mentioned handhelds. And I would say maybe the switch for the room, yeah. like wherever we're staying. But when we're on the road, obviously, you're driving, you're not playing a handheld, which, which is always good advice. When um, he's not watching it. And the switch. I, don't, I don't play any handhelds or anything while we're on the road, except our license plate game. Yeah. We, that, is that really called a, hand, is that we have an a handheld? App. <laughs> we have an app on my phone. 
And we watch the license plates of cars and see how many cars we can get nationwide because we're old and weird like that. Uh, also, I guess... Well, that's we... because I think we came from an era of you had to figure out other things to do on the road because there were no such thing as handhelds when we were kids. So We uh, we also play the game of, of Marco Polo where we just have conversations with people, especially like around convention uh, time. Before conventions, the people we're going to yeah. meet up with and afterwards. So we will just chat and chat away. But those help the miles melt away too. wasn't listening. You talk too much. He is a very wonderful, considerate passenger in the sense that he could 100% play his games while driving, but he does make sure that he talks to me and keeps me awake and keeps me company. So I do very much appreciate the fact that he does not play his handhelds on is trips. Is the, the halo there yet? Still not there? <laughs> what do I have to do for that thing? <laughs> Retrospect reviews, congrats on 3,000 subs in six years. What is an item from your childhood that you would like to get back but you haven't been able to find yet? Well, we actually did a video on this with J-Lo. Um, it's the Punky Brewster doll. I really still want to try to find that. So You've only ever seen one. Seen it one time, she was naked. And creepy. And creepy. And her hair was a mess. She looked like a meth head. So <laughs> I was like, not taking that one. <laughs> Ew, Punky, what's happened? <laughs> Uh, for me, honestly, throughout the years, I've done pretty well at hanging on to most stuff that I had growing up. There are some game boxes I would maybe like to get. I'm, I'm not a complete in box collector at all, but, uh, you know, like, like Final Fantasy 2 and 3 on Super Nintendo, Super Mario RPG, just for the sake of having the boxes. I've got the games, the manuals, usually, uh, but I, I just don't have the boxes anymore. The other thing is uh, my comics that I used to yeah. have. Once upon a time, I decided I was going to only collect video games and I got rid of all of my comic books. I would like to have them back just because I would like to go through them with you yes. and show you some of the stuff that I used to have that I feel you would really appreciate. Yeah. So that's a shame. VKQ Interests and Adventures, an awesome nerdy family who show that nerdy now is for the whole family. They <laughs> they have a huge variety of stuff going on on their channel, which, you know, I absolutely love. I don't care about niching down. I like variety. I like seeing all the things that you're interested in. So, uh, mandatory congrats on 3K in six years. Uh, thank you for putting out videos that genuinely bring a smile to my face. Thank you for the love and support you've shown our channel and family. Most importantly, thank you for being an inspiration for our channel <laughs> by being a variety channel. So, yeah, just a couple who uh, do whatever floats our boats. That's what we do. Yes. Ladies first, what is your Grail toy playset you don't have yet? I actually never had this, so this is 100% not like I'm trying to re-get it back. This was Hot Wheels Stow and Go Alpine Mountain. I saw it one time as a child. I had just a regular Hot Wheels Stow and Go, and I still have that one actually. And I loved playing with it. I enjoyed watching our kiddo play with it because it was kind of neat to see her play <laughs> with it and be like, oh, look at that. But I saw, I think one time in a store and I was like, oh, that's like the one I've got, but it's different because it's got like snow and the snow has like, f like come off the mountain and like covered half of the town and there's like tread marks through it. It was just really cool looking. And I always wanted that one as a kid, but I never got it, even though I would ask for it a few times for like birthday or Christmas or whatever. That I've always wanted that. And I've never seen it in the wild. Any flea markets we've ever been to, any conventions, whatever. I've seen tons of stow and goes and I'll always open them up and look. And it'll be a different kind. It won't be the one, that one. You were on drugs, I just imagined that one. I thought I was until I looked it up on the internet and actually it does exist. I wanted to make sure before I said it that it was real. So <laughs> it is real, I promise. <laughs> they asked Tom, what game in your backlog are you most looking forward to beating? Breath of Fire 3 on PS1. And I would have to check our list. I actually don't think I have that one anymore. Oh. Ages ago, me and a friend were both playing through it. You know, we had take turns. And we had both gotten very, very, very far in the game. Very far. We're talking like end of the game. Like pretty much stop screwing around, go fight the final boss and you're done. And his little brother found a very fun game to play on PlayStation. <laughs> it's the memory card game. And when you press a certain button, it has the funniest thing. It's so cute. Like, like the little figures, they'll like spin and disappear. <laughs> he deleted our saves. And I just never had the heart to start all over again. But I really enjoyed... The Breath of Fire series. Breath of Fire 3 was amazing. 
but and it's it's not. I haven't finished it. He eventually woke up from the coma, didn't he? I uh, I don't I don't know. <laughs> the world may never know. <laughs> and last question: If we ever make it out to your way or vice versa, want to get all caffeinated on Death Wish? Hit up an arcade. <laughs> That's a silly question. One what billion kind of percent. Question is that? Like, like, of course. Do you like asking questions that you already know the is answer to? Is the Pope to? Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> so Steve Craig at Retro Games. Not speaking of people to meet up with, we did meet Steve Craig down at Siege. Congratulations, you two. You guys deserve three million subs. Yes, we do. YouTube. <laughs> wow. link, link. Uh, so happy and excited for you and your channel. My question is, what is your favorite segment to film for the channel? Mine would have to be any of our event coverages. I absolutely love traveling, so I love to go places and see new things and cover those events. Honestly, yes. I enjoy filming the, the conventions, the events. I enjoy filming them. Editing is a much different <laughs> yeah. story. I come home, I've got like 40 gigabytes and 200 different video clips of varying size, not to mention the pictures and all the other stuff that I'm going to have to get later on to try to figure out what to do with. But filming it is fun because it's fun to interact with people, even if I'm scared deep down. It's like I'm going to have fun and talk to this cosplayer. I hope they don't see I'm shaking. <laughs> that was so much pressure. I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> No pressure at all, no pressure. No pressure, that means all the pressure. Oh, this the next name one. name I can't say Oh, ever. come on, give it a go. <laughs> Iowa Retro Gamer Dad. Iowa Retro Gamer Dad. Iowa Retro Gamer Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Your name is not easy. <laughs> and I'm from oh. Iowa. <laughs> oh, Zach, we, we kid because we care. Uh, so, congrats. Growing up, what was your favorite video games? So... To answer that real quick, Mario games, for me, for fun, I love playing the Mario games, so my favorite games, I always loved a new Mario game, but RPGs, because I had to buy most of my games, and my dollar went the farthest with an RPG. What did you have to do with one of your games because you didn't have other games to do? Oh, super with Super Mario World? Mm -hmm. Flip that sucker upside down. I He's done, talking the television, guys. I had done everything in that game. So I challenged myself and I turned my teeny tiny TV upside down and I beat all of Yoshi's Island. Like every single level on Yoshi's Island. And then I started to feel kind of sad with what I was doing with my life. But did that not help you out when oh, you played Odyssey? Dude, Super Mario Odyssey comes out and it's like, go through this pipe. Hey, now you're up upside down. And I'm like, Nintendo, I've been training for this. D did you have a favorite game? I did, Golden Axe. Oh, Golden yeah. Axe, Frogger, and Cubert. Those Man. are my three favorite game, games growing up as a child. And then as I got a little older, when um, uh, my all time favorite game was obviously my neighbor. <laughs> and then I, I like this. Who would win in a fight, Indiana Jones or Han Solo? Ah, oh, see, I had to think about this a minute because I was like, they're both kind of, you know, tough and ruthless. They Neither one of them have a problem killing people. So it's not like you can be like, oh, this one wouldn't kill anybody. But ultimately... I settled on Han Solo. You want to know why? Let's, let's hear it. Han shot first. Ooh. <laughs> I actually gave the uh, the win to Indy because oh, really? I feel like Han, even though he's a smuggler, he's, he's got that heart of gold. And Indy's a little more hardcore, but after he killed Han, Chewie would come over and rip his arms off. Yeah, let the Wookiee win. <laughs> so total level, congrats on 3K Nerd Lanes. Another great channel. Joey actually joined us for, uh, I believe, our first Zelda 1000. He was our featured <laughs> guest on that. And uh, so he's got, I guess until then, my question is, can you think of a question for me to ask you? We absolutely can. I've already got it in the mail, but I would give that about six to eight weeks before it shows up. <laughs> okay. Uh, JLove81, who is your favorite human bubble wrap popper? J -Love See, you guys put me you guys put me in a really bad position here. If I say J Love, she's gonna slap me because I didn't pick her. And she's true. right here. But if I say Lacey, the next time I see J Love, she's gonna slap me but because I didn't pick her. She's gonna slap you anyway. So this is the one question I'm gonna have to pass, guys. Time. I'ma slap the nerd right out of you. Your channel name's gonna be Do You. Drink games with Josh question for Lacey. We know Tom is a massive Zelda fan, but what is your favorite video game? Again, any kind of Sims type game. Any 
sim slash survival farming game, but not like survival like zombies. I've got to, you know, not get killed, but like where you're like maybe on a deserted island and you have to c gather things, build a house, farm to, to survive, that kind of thing. So I like Stardew Valley type stuff, Sims games, hospital simulations, stuff like that. Now, uh, Josh also said that he loves genuine channels, by the way, that are making content they love, not chasing the algorithm for fame and fortune. So thank you very much because yeah, that's what we exactly do. What we we do. uh, <laughs> th this is our nerdy stuff. That's that's why we talk about it. Show it. <laughs> uh, question for Tom: Back in the day, did you prefer pipe, bong, or papers? Inquiring minds want to know. Well, Josh, Streets of Rage Two, the pipe was probably one of the best weapons that you could use. Uh, as for bongos, I mean, I usually play those until all hours of the night until Lucy here tells me to stop because you know she's going crazy. And papers, I will have you know, I am a legal citizen of your planet. No, I know what you're asking, and I'm going to break your heart, maybe other hearts. I'm boring. I never partook. I like how he asks you, but he doesn't ask me. Because he already knows. He knows I was a good He girl. knows you're wild. <laughs> but no, uh... We're both good, good, good uh, boys and girls. Definitely grew up in an area where pretty much... I'm, I'm sure that 99% of the people around me did. Oh, yeah. I never did. I, I just never had a reason to. Uh, nothing against it. Nothing yeah. for it. Just... I was not never my, interested. No, my bag, baby. But uh, but yeah, never had a problem with anyone who yeah. did. And I'm just boring like that. Yeah. I'm a boring guy. That's what I tell people all the time. So James ID Four HT, what's your favorite Ren Fair experience? I would have to say renewing our vows for our fifth wedding anniversary in Ooh. St. Louis. Ooh, yeah, that's a good pick. That's a tough one to top. That was too. a lot of fun because it was a big, giant, massive wedding that people were renewing their vows or getting married for the first time. We all said them at the same time. We all got roses. We all got to take a giant group photo. And it was just this big, giant wedding ceremony with just a bunch of people there and a big, giant ass reception. And it was just, it was so much fun. I, I apologize, I didn't go so sentimental. I went with, after the fact, uh, one of our Oklahoma Renaissance Fair videos. Afterwards, we got a message from a family who said they had watched our video yep. and took their daughter to see the fairies, who absolutely loved it. And it was one of those things that they would have missed otherwise. I really like that. Yeah. I, I think that was one of my favorite experiences because it was in a time when the video did exactly what it was supposed to do. It's, it's supposed yeah. to show off the fair, this event, you know, it's to show you guys why to go to it, what you may have missed out on, mm -hmm. you know, what you may be missing out on by not going to these and why to go. And so the fact that it served yeah. its purpose, it, it felt really good. Plus, you know, I mean, when kids get to go to like Ren Fairs, when they get to see cosplayers and everything and they see their superheroes, there's little magic that yeah. can compare to that. Watching their eyes light up, their faces, the smiles that form. Yeah. There was one time, actually, we were at Oklahoma Ren Fair, and a father stopped us and said they had been to Oklahoma before in the past, but they watched our video right before they came to this one, this trip particularly, and didn't know there were mermaids. And he said, we'd been coming here for years, and we had no idea that they had mermaids here because it's kind of tucked off in the back, and our video showed yeah. him where they were and how to find them. And so he took his daughter to go see the mermaids and she was super excited. And she even got a bubble that she got to keep with her. <laughs> so uh, stuff like, like you said, I love when we get feedback that our videos are doing exactly what we meant to do, which is inform you of what's out there and what to do. Yeah, and to clarify real quick, it's it's no fault of like the Ren Fair that people yeah, are missing out on this. Yeah, they just stick them where they can. Yeah, they stick them where they can and sometimes it's off the beaten path mm -hmm, almost, yeah. you know, like like you very much have to explore, but it adds to it because yeah. like with the fairies, with the, the woods, mermaids, like, oh, there's mermaids. Yeah, you know, it's like, wait, where's this trail go? Am yeah. I even supposed to be on here? Oh my gosh, there's a mermaids in there. Yeah. <laughs> Our pal Mega Matt, who's hooked us up with some cool stuff, uh, a Pac-Man phone, anyone? It's for you. Waka waka waka, waka waka, wak 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 wak. Look, kids. Oh, hey, I lost it. Wow, this question, I was scratching my head over this. Weirdest moment you guys have had <laughs> on the channel, at a convention, during filming, during a panel, traveling, whatever you guys can think of, weirdest moment. I think we both kind of couldn't think of anything, but then finally both 
thought of the same thing and agreed that it was kind of the same. And it's anytime anyone recognizes us. Yeah. That's really weird to us because I don't see us as celebrities. I don't see any YouTuber as a celebrity, really. So to me, it's just kind of weird that it's like someone I have no idea who they are comes up to me and says, hey, you're Do You Nerd. I know you guys. But what's even more weird is when it's in public. At a convention, I kind of get that. Because I'm, you know, I'm wearing a name tag. I'm in our, I'm in my, our natural environment. But like when I'm at a grocery store or somewhere normal, and someone's like, "Hey, you have a YouTube channel, don't you?" And I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> a couple of other weird things. The, again, the popularity of the Mexico video for a channel called "Do You Nerd?" Yeah, that it's we not, don't travel it's except to like travel. conventions. <laughs> so the fact that that became so popular, it's like. Okay, that, that's kind of weird. And <laughs> something that I'm going to expand upon in a little bit was uh, meeting Sega Head, like, through the community and the friendship that developed. Yes. So, hang on, Mega Matt. We're, we're going to expand on that in just a moment. First of all, Loco Maverick, my question is for each of you. Favorite game of each decade until now, please? Zelda. <laughs> you set the bar too low. That's on you. Uh, okay, so first of all, Let's start with like the 70s. I'm going to throw out Pac-Man on the Atari 2600 because that was my first, you know, my first introduction to Pac-Man. I It was years later before I played it on the arcade. And I was like, wow, this is nice compared to the Atari one. But it did leave an impact on me because it's always the Atari 2600 game that I think of. When I think of that console, I think of Pac-Man. It wasn't the best port, but it, it was my port. It was my Pac-Man for the longest time. Beyond that... I mean, I'm kind of going to cheap it out and say Zelda because throughout the decades, the games have changed just enough that there's usually something new to the formula, uh, but there's enough still there that keeps them consistent. The quality is always high. Nintendo's always real big about the quality of their games. And throughout the years, as much as I could pick out, you know, this game from this era, this game from that era, each decade offered something new in terms of Zelda games, you know, as far as like opening up the world, diving deeper into the story, expanding on the characters and the lore. So it's kind of easier to just say throughout the decades, the Zelda series is one that I could always count on that when I put my money down on this, I'm not going to be disappointed. I would say for me, it would probably be like in the beginning, it would be, you know, um, the Qbert and Frogger. Uh, very early on and then moving into Zombies Ate My Neighbor and then probably I would say moving into The Sims and Animal Crossings. So the Animal Crossing it was 2000s. Ones, yeah, that that's was, a good call yeah, too. Again, Animal that, Crossings throughout the several. Yeah, decades. constant quality throughout yeah, the years yeah. so, and something you could always look forward to. Mm -hmm. Sega head. Ooh, ooh, I got to question. What was the most special thing that has happened to you guys as a result of YouTube? If they don't say when they met me, then I swear to God, I'm going to make toast of the bathtub. Which is funny because it's kind of stems back to meeting him kind of was through the bathtub. Well, yeah, why don't you go ahead? So, yeah, it would be definitely meeting Sega Head. I really appreciated the fact that he challenged you and not me. He said, Lacey, you don't have to do it. Ha ha. More specifically, Tom, don't worry, Lacey. You can do the same as what my wife did. You can do the filming. So you've dodged that bullet, Tom. Ha ha. I always thought, well, who's this weird British guy? Why is, that, why is he being so nice that he's not making me have to do some kind of challenge? Unlike Captain Algebra, who said, Leo Lacey, you don't get out of this challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and Lacey, let's go. Get in that ice bath. Kind of on the same point, and going back to Mega Matt's question, kind of a weird moment to think of. I'm not even joking when I say that Sega had probably my best friend because I literally talk to this man every day and it's so lame if we don't hear from one another for a day we immediately check up the following day where were you I missed you I know but such a bromance <laughs> honestly the thing is when you consider how unfathomable the conditions were to meet this guy I had no idea who Sega Head was until YouTuber of the month. I was gonna say I couldn't remember if the he challenge was, came first or the or the YouTuber. Did. He was nominated when we were hosting. <laughs> so if we weren't hosting, yeah, we if he hadn't met. been nominated, we wouldn't have met this guy. If he hadn't won, we probably wouldn't have met this guy. And you then, know, and again, when I say meet, this is all online. Yeah. We haven't had a chance to meet him in person. And he says, "Hey, get a chocolate egg with a gold foil around it. I'll do the rest. Trust me." 
How the hell is it? I don't know, alright. Did, did he just smash that into his forehead? Uh, yeah. Smash. <laughs> but it's the fact that it was all these little things that stacked up and fit so perfectly in place to, you know, get to know and befriend someone who now I literally talk to on a daily basis, even years yeah, after we were years. hosting that. That so was, what, 2019? It's really a testament to uh, the kind of friendships, the bonds that you can make on YouTube. So the most special thing that has happened as a result of YouTube, friends that we wouldn't have had otherwise, because this is not a geographical location. I'm not friends with you <laughs> because you live in the same cul-de-sac as I do. You know, you live across the world yeah. and, and you're such a close friend, but YouTube made it happen. Yeah, I would definitely say Sega Head and then, you know, in actually getting to meet and become really good friends in person with J Love and Linda Mustang and Sean 8 Bit and um, Salty Bandana Boy. Um, we, you know, we just, we all clicked when we met for the first time at Siege and we've just kind of, we've all been this really close knit little group and we've got to meet up at a couple other conventions and we just still hang out just us at the conventions with other people, but we're the core. So I think, just like you said, we never would have met these people otherwise. Mm -hmm. I would never know who these people were otherwise. So I'm so thankful that we got to meet those guys and we get to hang out with them every once in a while at conventions. And Sega, I would love for him and his family to be able to come visit us. I can honestly say, after all these years, you and Sega, not a coincidence that you both have the exact same first names. You are literally the British and American versions of each other. You're the same person. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Starlord says you should have way more than 3,000 with the time you must put into editing some of these videos and not just the editing but making them fun and finding the perfect clips at the right time to throw in. Brian, thank you. Thank you. Uh, actually, fun fact on that note, whenever I throw in clips, I very, very, extremely, super rarely ever reuse a clip. So if I used it one time because it was kind of funny, even if we can make that same reference later on, it's been a super spare. Yeah. The funny thing is, is that's not a YouTube trope that we try to use as a gimmick. That is literally me and you oh in real gosh, life. We really do. We do that in real life. We just don't have someone to like put a video up while we're talking. We quote stupid stuff to we one do. another all the time and, and we'll throw something out and make the other finish the line or yeah. something. <laughs> uh, but some great questions here. Do you nerd for horror? 100%. Absolutely love horror. One of my favorite genres. Yes. Love horror. A good slasher movie is great. I also love the paranormal stuff, the ghost stuff. Anything that can just really get under your skin and leave you at unease, love it. Although I don't like exorcist demon stuff because that's real and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, broken bones in your life. I cannot confirm because I didn't go to the doctor, but I'm pretty dead gum positive I broke my tailbone one time. That was my fault. <laughs> I have come very, very, very close to breaking bones, but I've never officially broken a bone that I can verify. I almost broke my arm one time. The doctor said, hit it just even a teensy bit harder than I'd hit it, and I would have snapped that bone in half. I've popped my ankle out of place but I never broke anything, uh, cracked my head open, but didn't crack the actual skull. So I have been very hard on myself, but not hard enough to actually break anything. I guess technically I broke a tooth off once. So that's the only verified broken, if you call a tooth a bone, so. <laughs> I've, uh, I broke my, my left arm in two spots uh, here and in my wrist. Um, I fell off something probably about the size of a, uh, a porch, uh, a short, short table or something, and I fell on top of another child. This was when I was a kid. I so fell you broke off something. Child. I fell off something so small. Something broke my fall, but I'm the one that got hurt. He was fine. <laughs> I broke my arm. 
And uh, I actually used to be a lefty until I did that. And since I couldn't use my left hand anymore and I was so young, probably five at the time, I started to become a righty. And then last, do you nerd for Disney? Now, he says that he doesn't remember seeing a show a lot of Disney related pickups. I think it's been like very sparse. Yeah. The problem is there's never been like a, a focused video on it, but like once in a while it'll be a video and there'll be like that one Disney thing or two mm -hmm. Disney things. We have a backlog video that's been in there for quite a while that's very Disney focused. It's kind of sitting there for when we need it. But yeah, do you nerd for Disney? I absolutely love Disney. I love all the old school Disney stuff. I love old school Disney movies. I love Mickey, Minnie, all that other stuff. I'm obsessed with Disney Dreamlight right now. Just I just really enjoyed everything about Disney. It it just kind of kind of represents magic and whimsy and fairy tales that I'm totally love and would love to live in and obsess with. So since I can't do that in real life, I can live that vicariously through the movies and the TV show and Disney World and Disneyland and all the theme parks and stuff like that. So now I didn't grow up with a whole lot of Disney stuff. It actually wasn't until this lovely lady <laughs> took me as an adult to Disney World <laughs> for my first time ever. Uh, but I have always adored the hand-drawn animation stuff. Yeah. You know, later on when they started going into CG animation, I mean, I, I get it and everything. But there's something about that hand-drawn stuff that just really resonated with me. And timeless classic stories there. <laughs> Freaking Robin Hood. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh yes. Yeah, show, show, show me any picture of Robin Hood, like a still picture, and I can hear that picture Ooh, in my head. Lally, <laughs> Ooh, lally, golly, what a day. <laughs> uh, Pocket Rocket Radio, someone that's been following us for a long time. Thank you so much for all the support over the years. Uh, presidential knife fight, in <laughs> That was such a fun day. <laughs> I'm going to stab somebody. I'm only stabbing you because you have two hearts. Because you both have killed me, so it's equal revenge. But I'm going to try to stab you. <laughs> Question, waffles or pancakes? Which is better? Choose carefully. Oh. I say as long as it's blueberry, I don't care. Oh, there you go. That's that's true. She loves her blueberry stuff. I love blueberry pancakes, love blueberry waffles. I don't care. If I'm going syrup, waffles all the way. Those pockets, I mean, it's it's obviously yes, literally like that, yeah. fashioned, created for syrup. But you've got to have pancakes when you're doing a PB&J. Oh, yeah. Like, like, put peanut butter on one pancake, jelly on the other, slap them together. Oh, My problem is stuff. it depends on my mood. Because sometimes I'm like you. I want a nice, crispy, crunchy waffle where those pockets are holding the syrup and the, each pocket is loaded with butter. And I want to take a nice crunchy bite. But there are some times that I love the fact that pancakes will just soak up that that syrup and makes it soft and squishy. And just so, yeah, it depends on if I want crunchy or squishy. <laughs> uh, back in the day, Gamer <laughs> says you want to ask you want to ask me to ask you anything. You've met me, right? Of course we have met you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she stole your Castlevania bag. I did, I took your Castlevania bag uh, back. <laughs> Tony is a great guy. By the way, as of filming this, he just recently hit 1,000 subs. That's a man who needs tons of more followers because he's hilarious. And if you don't he's like underrated. him, you're going to love Angry Baby ruining <laughs> oh, all God. of his videos. Angry Baby is hilarious. <laughs> So I've got some some questions that came in a little later. Virusy nearing closer and closer to 500, and says you're the sole inspiration, guys. Keep being yourselves. What the what the? Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, us. Come on, come on. There's there's better inspirations than us <laughs> out there. Uh, question I have: As of now, which game system do you own the most amount of games for through all of your collecting, and how many games is that? When I first shared this question with you, you already had an I, idea yeah, which system it, it would PS2. be. PS2 with 452 games. And that's not even all of them. Oh, that's... Are you kidding? That's not even scratching the <laughs> surface. That's not even a hair on said surface. The runner-up is actually the NES, really? which is way behind at 289 games. Still, though, that's a pretty good. Well, I'm surprised that we have 289 NES games, but it's also funny to think that there's that much of a gap there. Pragmatic reviews, subs well earned. You guys have been a joy to follow. I'd ask to the both of you, what's one item in the collection you have to stop and smile at every now and then just for the fact that you own it? Now, for me... I kind of want to say like the Zelda Grails, things that I honestly, truly, I, I cannot stress enough. I never thought that I would have these things. The Zelda board game, 
the CDI games, the Game & Watch, the Game Watch. I like to just look at these and to realize I actually managed to get a hold of those. You know, it, it seemed so unbelievable. But I really do love just the homemade stuff. So again, the, yeah. the Zelda paintings from Russ and from Jin, but also the, the Dreamcatcher, the Mario Dreamcatcher from Mary at Coop of Nerds. And not only that, but just the things that we did get as gifts and through trades with people, you know, because we put them up in our game room and each time you see them, you reflect back on that story of, hey, that's that thing that we got from this person. And that's the thing that we got from this person. And it all happened because we did YouTube and because it's a cool community. I mean, these are literally things that would not be in our collection without the community. I would probably say if I were to think of anything different, just walking into my collections room and seeing the different action posy positions you've put my toys in. Because it's, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things, it's like, you won't say a thing, you won't bring any attention to it, I'll just walk through my room and my toys are doing something different that they weren't doing the day before. And, you know, you just kind of wait for me to notice it. So it, it I, I love looking at my toys, but it also makes me think of you because you move my toys around and stuff. And by the way, once those toys go in that position, they're like that forever. He has to be she, the one to change it. She never takes them out of that position, <laughs> no. whatever I do to them. Whatever <laughs> position I put them in. <laughs> Retro Rivals, they love us. Huge, con huge congrats on 3K and six years on the tube. I have a question. Please come to Siege. Wait, how do questions work? <laughs> hey Pumpkin, I want to see if the slide detector works. Okay. Uh, Tom and Lacey of Do You Nerd will not be at Sieg this year. Or does that make you sad? Yeah. Are you sad because you wanted to accidentally have one too many and fool around with Lacey? No. You guys got room for a third? No. I think they really want us to come to see. I know, but you know, I have a different job than I did before, <laughs> and I can't get off for it. Yeah, money and stuff. And I, I will. Hey, hey, I got a question for them. Then, please come to Mo Game Con. What are we doing? We're <laughs> doing a polo. I don't know if you. I don't can... know what a polo is. You're on one though. Polo away there. <laughs> Somebody watching. Uh, I don't know if you can polo sideways like this, but here we are doing I it anyway. I can polo upside down. <laughs> right. Literally, <laughs> Call me. We can. We've got a place for you to stay. <laughs> Come to Mo Game Con. The, I love one game, one day conventions though, because it gives you more time to hang out with all your friends. That is true. That's that's so. certainly a benefit. All right, and then the last question I have here is the other power couple of YouTube beyond us and the retro rivals i mean we're like a perfect little trifecta right here we're at the top oh <laughs> co-opal of nerds congrats on three thousand subs that feels impossible uh q a time it all goes to heck financially what collection do you sell first they love us and they say that we are an inspiration to them <laughs> so uh yeah we we need that money what are you selling first my blood the cat <laughs> i have actually had to sell off my game collection twice before and pretty much started from scratch so to sell the game collection off not not really affects me at all uh a lot of times people will be like well i would save this and this nope nope there are some days when work will be such a pain that i tell her I'm this close to just selling it all off and finding us a cabin out in Montana and uh, <laughs> being like, that's, that's it. That's our life now. Uh, so honestly, if it all went to heck and we needed the money, I would absolutely sell the games in a heartbeat. I, I love the video games. I love having them. It's fun to collect them. And I do love the ones that we've traded and got from people, you know, because they have stores, they have history. Yeah. But if, if the need were there, Things do come before, you know, yeah. material needs. So, I mean, those games, they can go. Forget it. They're gone. Yeah. I probably could do the same thing. I have a lot of stuff that I could get rid of, too. But there would probably be some figures or whatever that I wouldn't be able to get rid of. Oh, Here you wouldn't be able to get rid of any of them because you open them. Isn't that right, Fresh and Mary? Don't worry, babies. I won't let the bad men get you. It's funny, I was looking at a package over there, I was like, do you think we should just open that toy right there, right on screen right now? Now, real quick, 
Uh -oh. As of filming this, I am going to the video. We've got the newest comments on top. Reloading, reloading. Looks like the last one that we have as of this reload was Co-op of Nerds. So that is it. No more questions there. We hit all the ones that we could one last time. Thank you guys so much for all the questions. They were a lot of fun to think about. Some, <laughs> Some really... Or thumpers. Yeah, really, really good head scratchers in the mix there. And uh, I cannot stress enough again, thank you so much for all the support that you have given us. Yes. We really enjoy getting to just be nerdy with you guys, share our passions with you. And we always enjoy the interactions that we have in the comments. And especially when we're lucky enough to meet up with you guys in person at conventions and hang out and everything. Thank you so much for just being friends to a couple of nerds who started this off is an insurance thing, just, <laughs> just in case. Yeah. Thank you for being a friend. All right, well, now do, you, do you have any questions? Do you have a question for me? I know that we started this all off. Let's bookend this. Do you have a question for me? Do you want to go play Zelda? Absolutely. <laughs> Bye, nerdlings. Bye, nerdlings. Do you have a question for me? Yeah. You want to go fool around? Sure. But that means you can't play Zelda. I only need... And cut. <laughs>